Hey there, welcome to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. Hosted by me, Emma Capotis. Each week, I'll be covering everything from dance music culture, industry news, trending topics, and festival tips, advice, and reviews. You can also expect to hear stories from ravers, artists, business owners, and more. Tune in every Wednesday for your weekly dose of peace, love, unity, and respect. Hey guys, welcome back to Rave Culture Cast, your weekly guide to the EDM community, music festivals, and more. I'm your host, Emma Capotis. Welcome to my official Electric Forest 2022 review and recap. I have never in my life had such an afterglow from a festival before, if that gives you any inkling of how today's episode is going to go, but like... I have so many thoughts. I have so many things to share with you guys today. I have five festival vlogs out for this event. So if you guys want to actually see what this experience was like, you can head over to my YouTube channel, Emma Capotis, um, to watch all of the vlogs. But today, uh, if you are new here and you've never been or never listened to one of my festival reviews, I get into like the nitty gritty details. And I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. I'm not going to go like day by day and take you through like every single thing I did. I broke this into categories. Um, so in case you've never been before or you're thinking about going next year, I really want to tell you like what the experience was like, what were the highs, what were the lows, like what are some recommendations I have, top sets. And then at the end, I also want to talk about who this festival may not be for because that's a big thing too. Like not every festival, just because I had a good experience doesn't mean you will and not every festival is for everyone. So I want this to be like a well-rounded recap and review Um, but it was absolutely beautiful and I'm very grateful for the experience. So before we go any further, you guys, a quick plug. If you need tickets to any of the following Insomniac events, let a girl know. I have links to all of these down below in the show notes. I am an affiliate um, with Insomniac, so if you guys want to purchase through me and support me directly, I appreciate it. So I've got tickets to Nocturnal Wonderland, Moonrise, EDC Orlando, Project Glow Philly, and Three Points right now. Um, So again, links will be listed down below if you guys want to purchase through me. Uh, Quickly, our listener of the week. So this week, I wanted to highlight a member of our community who is actually another content creator. Um, And I've been following her channel for a little while now, but this is for Centered Flow. Definitely go check her out. I saw she was at Forest as well. Um, She's in our Discord fam, and I saw she just posted her forest vlogs too, but um, she's an awesome creator. It's really cool to see new faces in this community. Uh, I'm really grateful you're a part of our community here, and I love to see other creators um, who love festivals just as much as I do. So Centered Flow, I hope you're having a great Wednesday. You're a listener of the week. Just wanted to give you a quick little shout out. So have an amazing week. Um, And of course, guys, if you have any submissions as well, you can totally nominate people for Listener of the Week. I'm happy to do shout outs for you guys. So you can email me raveculturecast at gmail.com or we have a channel in our Discord um, called Listener of the Week where you can drop your submissions. So that's everything. I want to dive right in now to the review and the recap, you guys. So I'm going to start this off by talking about the camping side of the festival because that's the first thing we did when we checked in. You set up your campsite and all that stuff. So I want to let you know how that whole experience was because if any of you guys did not know, I had never camped, like officially camped. I've done Camp EDC twice, but that doesn't count because it's not like in nature. You're in a parking lot (laughs) and you're in like a moon glow shift pod or I was in an RV one year. Like this was real camping. We brought the tent. We brought the supplies So let's start there. Let's do the camping review first. So here's what you should know about Electric Forest. So you can do early arrival. The event actually takes place from Thursday to Sunday. um, And years previous, they added on Wednesday early arrival. And now you can also do Tuesday early arrival, which I do know some people who did check in on Tuesday. We opted for Wednesday. Best decision ever. Very happy with that decision. Um, We also organized a group camp. So there are different styles of camping here. There's a massive like GA campgrounds, which is kind of first come, first serve. Depending on when you get to the festival, you will be like positioned, you know, either closer to the entrance or further away. There was a huge group camp. I feel like it's only going to continue to get 
bigger because if you have a lot of people and you know you want like a spot together um, it's assigned and everything then you can do group camp there's also a ton of VIP options there's a whole separate section called good life they had like their own stage they were all the way off to the right of the festival Um, you have the RV areas so depending on like the plug plugins you need to get whether you're doing like electricity or water hookups Um, you have RVs and then there's all different kinds. There's Camp Hush, which is quiet camping. Um, there was Maple Woods, which was like more in the shade. There was Cherry Orchard. So plenty of options for you to pick from. We did group camp. We, I think we had like around 45 people, I want to say. And this was with the Lunchbox fam. Um, I, I just have to say we just lucked out with our group. And I think that's what contributed to being, this being such a beautiful weekend because, like we I knew most of the people but then I met so many new faces as well and it was all like friends of friends and like the energy and the vibe of our group was fantastic so that was just amazing and we got very lucky that everyone was so cool and friendly and contributed to the camp so very very happy with that decision I would do group camp again in the future um, but I'm also kind of interested in either doing an RV or VIP in the future as well so we got there around 12 p.m. on Wednesday which I believe was when the doors like opened that you could check in there are two different entrances so this is where it's a little confusing this year I was a part of Electric Forest Unmediated program which was a brand new program that they were doing for content creators so I was so honored to be actually working with the festival for the first year I was attending like this was a long time coming Um, I had been talking to them since 2020 and this kept getting delayed so truly an honor to work with the team they could not have been nicer they like let us do our thing and we were basically just like capturing content all weekend and then you know posting that so I was a part of the program so I did get a pass through Electric Forest and then um was able to just you know capture content throughout the weekend so I had gotten that pass later I had purchased a GA pass in 2019 um, and forgot to change my shipping address, which I should have known. I think that happened to a lot of people. So it shipped to my old apartment. And unfortunately, I was going to give that to a friend, my friend BB Howell. So I had a little mix up upon checking in because I had to go to the North Toll entrance, which is like all the way north of the festival. But the group camping entrance and like majority of people were checking in all the way at the south entrance. So just know that. So I went to the North Toll. I went to the media area. I picked up my pass. And for some reason, I didn't just tell them, like, put my GA pass in BB's name. I took her pass with me. So we, like, check in. We go through security, which was pretty smooth. No issues at the security line. Um, And then we drove through the festival, which I had no idea where I was fucking going. (laughs) Like, I was, it was a little confusing because there was still, like, a road. But we just, like, followed all the cars into, like, the RV area because we went through the RV check-in area. And then I literally just started like off-roading and I was just like fucking driving around inside the festival because it was like more than half empty at that point, which was a good thing. I'm glad we got there so early, but group camp was basically empty. So we literally just had to like drive around until we found like our square. Um, And then BB came with her RV. That's who she was staying with. And unfortunately, when she got to the check-in, she didn't have her band on her. So they made her exit the RV and she had to wait at the box office for me. So it was not in walking distance and I did not did not realize that. So I started to walk to the North Toll and luckily um, it was like a fire chief or somebody stopped and he was like, where are you trying to go? And I said, I'm trying to go to the North Toll. And he was like, you're not going to walk there. <laughs> and it, meanwhile, it was the hottest day. Like this day was like 90 something degrees and so humid. So I'm like fucking pouring sweat. Um, so he was so nice. He gave me a ride. I gave BB her pass. Now we're stuck at the North Toll and we're like, we need a ride back. Um, This is when I knew, when I understood what like the forest magic is and the forest fam is because people could not have been nicer at this festival. It was amazing. So luckily we like waved down an RV that just went through a security line and we were like, can you guys give us a ride (laughs) to your camp and they were like sure get on so that was amazing so we hitched a ride back that was all done um went back started setting up my campsite and then you know my good friend vibe with aid was staying with me so all of her friends had gotten there by that time and we just like set up camp and stuff like that so it was really really cool so that's kind of like how the day started it was a little chaotic um 
but that's kind of the main thing so I we flew from New Jersey so we did bring stuff in our suitcases I was actually able to fit a six-person tent in my suitcase which was amazing um and then we did do a Walmart run before so we went and got like pillows blankets we got like thick mattress padding which was the best thing we ever did so we literally covered the floor of our tent with mattress padding and it was so fucking clutch um and then we just got like food coolers alcohol like all that kind of stuff so we brought like our, that all in in our car like absolutely packed our car and then the cool thing is because it was group camp the center of our camp ended up filling in and we put like four different canopies and that was kind of our hangout area so that's nice because like everybody could contribute so we had like people brought folding tables and camping chairs and games and the chill bean like blow up chairs and stuff so we like had this like really cool setup at the end of the day with group camp so again like very happy with how that went highly highly recommend the canopy could not stress that anymore like there is absolutely no shade in GA camping at all and it is so fucking hot let me tell you what people say about that is true so like lifesavers were the canopy earplugs eye mask like those three things are an absolute necessity if you guys are camping and then the other necessities I would say like 100% sunscreen um a hat I luckily brought a bucket hat with me I wish I brought more hats but I was wearing my hat like all day long keep your face out of the sun um extra socks like one thing you'll realize quickly which is why you know camping is not for everyone our feet were disgusting like disgusting they I had sandals on and they were just like fucking dirty brown black like it was not cute so if you don't like the feeling of being dirty and sweaty uh it may not be for you so I would bring extra socks and then baby wipes baby wipes were a literal lifesaver I was like baby wiping my body I was baby wiping my feet my hands like I just felt gross all the time so highly recommend baby wipes um and then we did run out of alcohol pretty quickly but our group like didn't buy that much anyway like we bought a bunch of beat boxes we bought some seltzers and things like that Eric but like Eric was in my group he bought some beers and we like finished that by like the second day because like you do have a lot of downtime during the day where you're just like sitting and hanging out which is fun um so I'd probably bring more alcohol in the future but that's kind of the camping essentials. Uh, quickly, the bathrooms. So one thing I learned about the bathrooms is that the shower areas are denoted by an, a huge like blow up animal. So there was like the lion area and the tiger area were the closest to us. So you can like see this huge like blow up tiger and you know like those are the closest showers to me and then um we were like not that far of a walk from the porta potties as well. So you kind of like figure out where our stuff is. The bathrooms were relatively clean, I will say. Like, at least the ones near our campgrounds. Every time I went, they had toilet paper. It looked like they cleaned them from day to day. So that was pretty nice. Um, It's just, you got to get used to going to the bathroom every day in a porta potty. It's not the cutest thing in the entire world, but it works. Uh, Showers were great. 10 out of 10 recommend. (laughs) Like, I I was like, not sure how that situation was going to go. But they were mobile showers. They had a bunch. I showered twice. I think I showered on... Thursday and Sunday I want to say or Friday and Sunday something like that it was 10 bucks credit card only the guy working at the showers was fucking hysterical like all this a lot of the staff I interacted with were great he had jokes for days and was saying the most inappropriately funny things like we were all cracking up so he made like waiting on the line go easier um there are lines like if I think I tried to go at like 11 a.m one day and I turned around and went back to my tent um and then another day I went like earlier than that and it wasn't as bad so you might just have to like wait in a line a little bit but showers were really good um rookie mistakes I made with the campgrounds I would say not bringing enough like just really chill like loose fitting or comfy clothes I kind of packed like what I would wear on a normal day like I had my denim shorts and like tank tops and crop tops like I wasn't even I didn't even want to put the denim shorts on after a day you know what I mean like I wish I had just brought like gym clothes essentially because it just was like so hot and sweaty and then you end up getting dressed up in your festival outfit anyway so I'm gonna bring like more like legging sets and things like that next time um and then leaving camp I want to touch on so it was an absolute shit show um we left Monday at noon we were in the car at noon and driving and we sat in line for two hours so luckily we had a full tank of gas fill your tank before you go there we never turned on our car to like charge things 
I'll talk about that in a second. So I never like wasted the battery or used the gas. Um, but luckily we had like a full tank of gas. We had snacks in the car and everything. And like we used the bathroom right before. But um, if you can leave early on Monday, like even if you can pack your shit after the festival when you get home, even if you're tired, like pack your car up so you can just go in the morning because essentially the entire campground started emptying and it was just like 10 plus lines going to this one exit, like all filing out. I had heard that the North Toll wasn't as bad, but I just didn't know how to get there and that was supposed to be the exit for like the RVs and the VIP campgrounds. So I'm going to figure out a new system for next year, but that was like an absolute shit show. Um, I did see some people leaving right after the festival, which I don't recommend that. Obviously, if you're drinking or doing any substances, just sleep the night off. But if you're not and you're sober, like I saw some people leaving at like four in the morning just to get the fuck out of there. So that could be an option for you as well. All right, guys, we're almost done with the camping. So charging, um, I want to touch on this because... For some reason, this was one of the things that was stressing me out but what, before I went to the festival because like we had no ele- electricity. So I was like, fuck, like how am I going to keep my phone charged? Like I have work to do. I'm creating content at this festival. It wasn't bad at all. I brought four external battery packs. I didn't even use all of them. Um, two of mine were like smaller packs and I used one per day. And then I bought this like one like really big external battery packed and that lasted me two days straight. So I had one extra battery pack left over that I never even touched The other thing I want to mention, there was no service if you had T-Mobile. All my Verizon friends were living great, had service all weekend, no problem. My ass, zero bars, zero. The entire time in the campgrounds and in the festival. The only way I was able to let my husband know that I was alive and that I was able to do my job, which I was there to do, was because I was a part of the media program. I got the media like area Wi-Fi, but only when I was in the media tent. So every single day around like 3 or 4 p.m., I would go into the festival, I would go to the media tent, and I would like use their Wi-Fi, and that was the only way I could like get my posts up, which like posting was a requirement of this program. So obviously I wanted to be able to do my job. So I went and did that. I like, you know, called my husband. Like that was my only time. So that, It was a blessing and a curse, guys. I know it's such a little thing, but like it was amazing because I had my phone either off or on airplane mode the entire time. So that saved the battery a ton. Um, And then I was like fully present. Like I was literally felt like I was in a bubble. I wasn't going on social media. I wasn't looking at the news, like nothing. So just letting you guys know, if you have T-Mobile, you're going to have absolutely no service there. Um, Thankfully, my friends are amazing and they let me use their hotspots a couple times too which was helpful um, because there were some instances which I'll I'll talk about later that I really needed service for so just wanted to mention that and the last thing about camp um, that was really fun food wise so we like I mentioned we brought some food in so like we made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches one day Uh, we had granola bars like you know snacks popcorn all that kind of stuff but we did plan a group brunch on Friday morning which was one of my highlights of the festivals um of the festival so we like we had a cooler I filled it with like I got the eggs the yogurts and cheese for the omelets and then other people brought cookware we had muffins people made like crumb cake or it was coffee cake that was like heavenly we made um like palomas and like breakfast drinks like we had this massive brunch on Friday and that was really fun so I was like cooking eggs for everybody um and it was just like a nice thing to do like as a community to bond all together on Friday. So I I really was happy with that. If I could in the future, I am considering driving to this event. I know it would be such a long drive, but like it would just depend if I'm going to do group camping again. I wish I could have brought more camping supplies and then I could bring them home with me because we did unfortunately have to throw a lot out. Like you basically have to leave all of your stuff at the garbage area. They give you like a recycling bag and a garbage bag. So we had to throw out so much stuff and it really sucks because it's such a waste and I don't like creating waste, especially at an an event that's like trying to be sustainable. Um, But either way, like if you can bring food in or cookware in, I highly, highly recommend it. Otherwise, I basically bought like one meal at Main Street and one meal in the festival grounds every single day. So I was eating about two meals a day plus like snacking and things like that. So That's kind of the deal with food. Um, The other thing with Main Street I'll mention is ice. Ice was $10 a bag, you guys. $10 a bag. 
it fucking hurt. That one stung. So because we were not having brunch till Friday, we had to buy two bags on Wednesday, two bags on Thursday. So we spent $40 on ice alone because it was just melting so quickly because it was so hot. Um, So that's the only thing. Uh, Somebody did tell us that there was like a farm a little bit further out that you could walk to that was selling bags of ice for $4 each. We just didn't feel like walking there, but that might be an option for you in the future. So I think that's everything on the campgrounds. Um, Main Street, like I mentioned, is kind of the central area for everybody. They had tons of food, drinks, so many different vendors. They had really fun things like Paula's Pancake House, which was a diner and drag brunch. Uh, So they did shows. I didn't get to go to that, but I definitely will be going next year. Um, They did have some shaded areas in there and like different like fun interactive things you could do. So we were in Main Street like pretty much every day. Um, So that was all great. Uh, Food wise there, what did I eat? I got, I mean, my favorite thing was island noodles. I had island noodles like literally three days in a row. Um, I didn't get to try the French toast Sammy because they had bacon on it, but it was literally like French toast, like bacon egg and cheese sandwich which sounded amazing there was like lobster mac and cheese I had a fried chicken biscuit sandwich like there were plenty of options there was vegan and vegetarian smoothies coffee oh and then there was a general store so if you're concerned about forgetting something don't worry about it at all the general store was like fully stocked up they had everything you can imagine they had camping gear if you needed it toiletries snacks food like basically all these things that you if you forgot them you it didn't matter uh toilet paper stuff like that so I think that's everything I kind of want to move on to the festival now but that's like everything you kind of need to know about camp again um there's other options some of my friends did the RVs really really nice at least they had like air conditioning and quiet and they had a bathroom on their RV so like that could be a really good option in the future um weather let's talk about the weather really quickly because I've always heard that you know it's temperamental you just never know what you're gonna get we could not have had more perfect weather and like literally thank the rave gods for that because it was like hot and sunny every single day it only rained once and it was like a drizzle and we all brought ponchos that was during LPGO we set on Sunday or excuse me on Saturday so it was very very hot during the day it was very cold at night like highly recommend bringing layers or onesies or jackets whatever you need when the sun goes down it gets cold um but like I said like sunscreen hats canopies like all of that is necessary for the weather the other weird thing which we did not anticipate at all is how late the sun set which was kind of a vibe but it was just very interesting Okay, so the sun set around, I want to say like 9.45 p.m. every single night. So that was just odd because it just it's like literally almost 10 p.m. It's still light out. So that was just interesting. So a lot of the festival is like during the day with the sun out. Um, and then like the forest comes alive at night and it looks absolutely, absolutely beautiful when the sun is setting and like peeking through the forest and like all the trees. So I wanted to throw that out there. Um yeah just so you guys know I'm telling you I'm going through every little detail so let's talk about the experience itself um like I said I'm not going to take you day day by day I'm just going to say my favorite things about Electric Forest so my number one favorite thing is for sure the magic of the forest what do I mean by that I've heard for years like forest fam happy forest like it's just the most beautiful community and people are so welcoming and there's just like a different energy 100% can confirm that um the forest when you walk in the layout of the festival was different than I thought like I wasn't expecting just the layout of it I just was like thrown off by that but not in a bad way I just was like oh that was not what I expected at all um the actual forest itself like seeing so many videos and vlogs like some things I kind of expected but it's just like even more beautiful and like awe-inspiring in person so the actual forest itself was my favorite thing about the experience like it's a literal playground for adults I've never felt more like a kid at a festival Everybody is like so happy-go-lucky, like so excited to explore. When you first walk in, um, you kind of come from like the Tripoli area is the closest to the campgrounds. Then you walk and then it's the ranch arena, which is the main stage. Then you go to the forest and there's like multiple entrances, which I didn't really realize. 
So you can kind of like pick and choose your journey. Each entrance is different. You've got like the umbrellas overhead, which is like one entrance and then one other way. Um, There's like the Sherwood forest sign and you have like the elephant, like the chapel. Like there's so many different ways you can walk through the forest. So that's my favorite thing. Just how it looks at night is beyond stunning. It everywhere you turn, there is a new adventure. There is something you can interact with. It's like shiny object syndrome. Like there's literally so many things to get distracted by, but in the best way fucking possible. So Um, the forest magic itself the art installations the things you can interact with like by far was my favorite thing Um, my second favorite thing was the giving culture of this festival what makes it special to me is that the fans and the like the people the forest fam participate so much in this culture which makes it even better Because the festival is there itself, right? Like they're cultivating this experience for us, but you could just show up and like take it for what it is. Like, but that's not what the people do. Like the people contribute. So, so many people bring gifts and I have some show and tell for you guys here today, but people bring gifts, people bring artwork, people write notes. There's all these hidden fairy doors all over the forest that you can like leave things in. There's so, it's all about like giving giving to other people, giving back to nature, giving to the forest. So everybody participating makes it fucking even better because you'll just walk around and people will give you things. So like here's a couple examples I have. Like one of my um, subscribers came to to me and AIDS meetup on Sunday and she made me this little care package and it's got stickers. It's got like a little mouse finger puppet, a little rubber ball um, and like just some other fun games and things like that. So that was so sweet. This was just a random sticker I found that says you are beautiful. That was in one of the fairy doors. Oh, this is something one of our friends, Kath, made um, in our group camp. How smart is this? She took the schedule and printed it out and laminated it and like connected it and handed these out to our entire group camp. Like how fucking smart and crafty is that? So that was amazing. Um, This was a little note I found in a fairy door and it says on the other side, it has a note written. And it says, do not strain yourself searching. What you need is already on its way to you. Like literal chills. Like you just stumble upon these things. And I, oh, I'm getting emotional. Like it's just what you need to hear. Like I felt like I needed to hear and needed to get this experience because there were just so many beautiful things that it reminded me of. And I, I think my friend Lexi retweeted this, but somebody said like in the forest, you either like fall in love with yourself your friends or the music or something like that and I definitely felt felt like I fell in love with my friends at this festival like that's how I felt but um at my meetup also I got this mushroom necklace isn't this so sick uh and then like you can actually open it and you can put like lipstick in this or something like that so that was so cute oh I met this DJ I think his name was Spooky Boo and he gave me a little ghost pin um Loanna Banana she's another content creator I got to meet her in Bass Drop Princess she gave me these little panda earrings which I loved um another subscriber made like pottery like literally made pottery and like glued these little flowers on them so we've got like a little pot how freaking cute is that um I also I don't I think somebody gave this to me or I found this in a forest like fairy tree but this one says you're doing so good for real so it's like a little bracelet and then this one oop I just threw something sorry (laughs) this is a pashmina I bought because I like to buy a pashmina at every festival but I got this like pink and green pashmina and it's got these elephants on the bottom because I really wanted a pashmina that reminded me of forest so I bought that I bought the shirt I'm wearing Um, This was at the general store that says Electric Forest. And then I also bought the Electric Forest fan because it was so trippy and sick. So I really liked that as well. I think the thing I just threw on the ground, I found a Dom Dalla keychain, which is like me in a nutshell. So that was so exciting. So I just had to like show you guys like that's the culture. That is like what it is. It's just so amazing. There's so many little things to discover. Um, There are two giving trees, which I didn't know there. Know that there's like the big willow when you first are kind of coming in and that's like what people know as the giving tree but there was also a secret giving tree which you can find that yourself so there was another giving tree and you basically like leave a gift and you can take a gift so that was the the second thing I loved the third thing I loved was the range of music so obviously you know me I love the dance music that's where I'm gonna go but it just wasn't like DJs like I so saw so many talented performers like every single artist brought their fucking talent like Elderbrook was one of the best people I saw 
he sings, he's performing live. Gioli and Asia, they were playing piano and drums. Like there were so many live performers. Like Grizz is up there going ham on the saxophone. Like there's bands, there's rappers, there's jam bands, there's DJs, there's performers, like literally everything under the sun that you could imagine. Um, there's also a piano in the middle of the forest. So on top of all of that, there are surprise sets, which luckily my friends had service because they were either getting notifications from the Electric Forest app or they were like seeing people like artists tweeting about it. But we saw a surprise Porter Robinson set at the piano. He literally just like walked up to the piano and played piano for 15 minutes. And then a fan asked to play with him and like she jumped up or she or he, I'm not sure, played piano with him. Like that was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. Um, so there were just like special sets like that happening all weekend. So the range of music was incredible. Um one of my favorite things was the observatory. So again, just a part of the forest magic. The observatory was the stage like in the middle of the forest. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And here's the thing with forest. It's not like over the top insane production and like stage designs. Like this isn't EDC or ultra. But it like the way it illuminates at night with the forest. And it's got like multi-tiers to it. Like you can stand in the back on like an elevated platform you look up and like the forest is like illuminated behind the stage. Like it was the most fucking gorgeous thing I've ever seen in my life. Like it was just so beautiful. I tried to do as many sets as I could there because I just loved the environment of it. So the observatory was a favorite. The RV parties were a highlight for me. This was also unique to this festival. So they ended up relocating them. But essentially uh, there are like these renegade parties. So if you have an RV you can throw your own things like people like brought their own speakers and stuff like that. But there were designated RVs hosted by like, you know, event companies. So I think Evolve Chicago was one of the stages and it was this massive like semi truck with this stage on it. And they ended up putting those like all the way by the south entrance. So it was super loud over there. So we did um, the surprise John Summit back to back Subtronic set, which I'll talk about in a second, which like what the actual fuck? When are you ever going to see that? So all the RV parties are like after the festival. So you can like go change, which is amazing. We put like you could put your PJs on, you could put a onesie on and then you can go party till whatever the fuck time in the morning that you want to. So love the RV parties. The next thing that I loved was the performers that were in character. They do not break character. It's like being in Disney World. It's so fucking cool. There's so many different kinds of performers throughout the forest. And I think what I'm going to lean into next time is like more interaction. Because this time like I was just soaking it in and I was obviously there to create content. So I really was just like trying to experience and explore the forest. But like next time I go, I want to participate even more. But um, for example, there's this area called the hangar, which is like this, you know, covered area. Um, and there's all these different rooms that you can go into and all of the people there are in character. And the more you talk to the characters, the more you will find surprises or special rooms or secrets. There's a scavenger hunt that you can do in the hangar. I didn't get to do it this year, but I will do it next year. So like the more you talk to the characters, the more you'll get out of the experience. Um, my friend Lexi one day on Sunday, we were walking through the forest and we stumbled upon this like sports broadcaster and these referees and these like, you know, athletes. And they were like, who wants to play a game with us? So like Lexi volunteered and it was slow-mo ball. And they literally had to like do a relay race in slow motion. I have the best fucking videos from that. So it's like the more you interact and play, the more you'll get out of it. So loved the performers. The totem culture, probably the best totems I've ever fucking seen at a festival. Like you guys are fucking hysterical. You're so creative. I did like a, a reel with the totems, but um... It, they just never ceased to surprise me and there were so many totems and so many flags. Um, even the names of the group camps, you guys, were fucking hysterical. Like I think one of them was Boofus de Soul. We were next to Camp Side Boob. Uh, there were some fucked up names. It was really funny. <laughs> like There were some really, really good ones. So um, just I just love this community's sense of humor. The totems are amazing. Uh, I put the food options. I liked the food. I saw some people saying they didn't, but I really enjoyed it. There were tons of different food areas depending on the stages that you were at. Um, 
So that was really cool. Like I said, they had beatbox there. So I was very happy that I could drink my beatbox. Um, but yeah, I got really good nachos one day. I got like an awesome, pe- I finally tried pineapple on pizza. I've never tried, I don't even know why I tried that. It just was like the only white slice that they had. And I was like, honestly, this isn't that bad. So that was good. Um, but I will say next time too, because there there is so much, like you cannot do it all. Probably even in a couple of years, you can't even do it all. But uh, there was a cheese bodega. There was like this huge donut shop. Like I didn't get to go into any of these places. So I definitely want to next time. Uh, the next thing I have to say is the Rothbury police. And I think it might have been the state police too, participating in the culture. Um, I'm not, this isn't like a political conversation right now. I'm not going to get into that because I had to turn the comments off on one of my posts because like we're not talking about like, cops right now in any other instance I'm just saying like the police at this festival are wonderful and I've heard good things about them before but they were having so much fun like this one guy had like a little hand on his finger and the hand had another little hand on it that had like a candy and he was like high-fiving people as they walked by they were trading candy with people like they could not have been nicer they were taking photos with people so I just have to say it's special because like you do not see that at other festivals. You know what I mean? So that was pretty cool. Um, And then the last thing I will say, I really like that this event was four days. I thought having Thursday to just get acquainted was so nice. Like if this was only three days, I would have been like emotional about it because four didn't even feel like enough, even though my body was like shutting down by the end of it and I had dust caked on my lungs. Like Thursday was awesome just to like, kick off the weekend get acquainted be able to just like get your bearings on the festival because normally you do that on the Friday of the festival like EDC for example and then you really just have Saturday and Sunday left and there's like way too much to do so I do really like that this event was four days and I am really happy that I did early arrival on Wednesday um again I had some friends arrive on Tuesday and they said that was even better because there were literally no lines and they could just like get there late and relax and just go to sleep so Yeah, guys, that's everything. I'm going to take a super quick break here and then we will get into just a couple more things about this event, top sets, all that good stuff. Alrighty, you guys, I quickly want to plug my merch line. If you guys didn't know, we have a Rave Culture Cast merch line where you can stock up on all kinds of things. I was wearing my merch like all weekend Electric Forest, but we have the whole Rave Culture Cast like logo series if you guys just want to rep the podcast. I have my Plur line, Peace, Love, Unity, and Respect, um, which I'm a huge fan of as well. So I've got that whole line. And then most recently I released um, basically just like a my ode to dance music, but there's tons of like house music references, all kinds of t-shirts, tank tops, long sleeves, hoodies, all that good stuff, bucket hats, Um, so if you guys are interested, I will always have a link down below in the show notes if you guys want to shop and support the merch line, but 10 out of 10 recommend the material. I choose this like nicer material. It's so soft and comfy. I cannot even stress like compared to like a normal t-shirt material. It's so comfy. I'm a big fan of the loose fitting women's tank tops. I live in my long sleeves, my house music subgenres, long sleeve, my rave culture cast long sleeve, like love those. The hoodies are super comfortable. Uh, So just wanted to shout that out if you guys want to pick anything up. All right, let's get back into the episode. All right, guys, let's talk music. I'll get through this pretty quickly, but I want to talk about my top sets. I'm going to do my top 10. So again, the cool thing about this event, like I had people I really wanted to see, but this definitely did not feel like the event where I was like running from stage to stage, like stressed out about where I had to be. So that also contributed to this being like a very relaxed, chill environment. Um, But I'm going to start at number 10. So we only got to see half of his set, but Cassian at the Carousel Club, he is one of my favorite like deeper melodic house artists. He's on this list and I only saw half an hour of his set. That's how good he is. 10 out of 10 recommend. The Carousel Club is amazing as well. Then I've got two LP sets on here. So my number nine is LPGOB's Dead House set, which she did at the Grand Artique on Friday night. This was so fucking special. I've never seen her do this before, but it's basically like her ode to the Grateful Dead because her parents were deadheads. And the Grand Artique was this tiny little stage in the middle of the forest. It was the biggest fucking vibe. I have videos of it. Like I can't even describe. It was so good to see her. Um, My number eight is LP's set on Saturday at Tripoli. So this was like all house music on Saturday at this stage. What contributed to this being amazing, not only like LP's energy and her music, which I love, but our whole group camp, like basically everybody was there for this set. 
And so we all just like partied and had so much fun. We did like the limbo. Like the vibes were just like immaculate during that set, even though it rained. Like so that was so good. Um, My number seven is Side Piece. They were also Saturday night at Tripoli. Side Piece is slept on in my opinion never miss them like I've learned my lesson never miss them they are so fun like one of the best like tech house DJs out there right now it's nitty gritty and party favors project together so fun they played the best edits like we were dancing our little booties off to that uh, my number six was John Summit set at Tripoli I'll never miss a John Summit set I love his music and one of the reasons I like him as a producer is he has so many hits now he could just play the same set every time he doesn't like every time he mixes it up he came out with his older track acid um it was such a good intro like it it just was immaculate I love his escape remix so John Summit was a vibe and then my top five this was really hard okay my five was tin liquor you guys like it is imprinted in my brain Friday was my favorite night like period out of the whole weekend but music wise it was my favorite night tin liquor at the observatory in the middle of the forest during the sunset we were feeling some type of way on friday that's all i'm gonna say (laughs) we were on another fucking level i loved it it was so packed for him i didn't even like go in the crowd sorry guys one second i didn't even go in the crowd it was too much so we were like sitting off to the side of the stage on this little like grass patch having the time of our fucking lives like it's one of the best like hour and a half moments of the whole weekend we were just cracking up doing stupid shit so that was amazing he is so incredible live i can't even talk about his music it's like more deep house but like wow listen to healing forest by tin liquor that will forever remind me of forest number four was elderbrook it was my first time seeing him i will never miss him he is such an amazing live performer like he was like kind of i don't even know how you describe it like he just had like all of his like setup here he was kind of like mixing live um singing live he played like the drums on the little drum pad thing I forgot how many good songs Elderbrook has like he's he is the voice on a lot of songs too so he was on Thursday night one of the best performances I've ever seen number three was the John Summit back-to-back Subtronic set I still can't believe we witnessed this I think we're all still in disbelief that it happened it would they just did such a good job like watching the two of them go back to back at four in the morning at the RV set Like it would be a little bit of house, then it would be a little bit of dubstep and bass, then they would play together, then they would like play each other's remixes. Like it was so fun. They were having a blast up there. We were having a blast. Like it was a fucking vibe. Uh, Number two, this might surprise you guys. Number two was Wookiee. Dude, Wookiee was so fucking fun. Are you kidding me? This was also at the observatory and this was on Sunday. At this point, it was just me and I came with my my best friend Tara and her brother Eric. We were in the tent together. And then my friend Lexi was with us and then Aid's friend Lester. So it was just like the f- five of us together. And we were just like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. There was like a 45 minute window on Sunday where it was just the five of us being idiots together. Like so many things happened in this time span. It was so funny. Like I don't even know how to describe it, but um we were having a blast exploring the forest essentially, and we didn't really have anywhere we wanted to be, and I was like, "Oh wait, Wookie's playing at the observatory." So we walk over there and it ended up being one of the best fucking sets of the weekend. It was just one of those like almost like open format sets. Like he just played so many throwbacks and random remixes. We had the time of our fucking lives. Anyway, Wookie was a vibe. That was so good. Number 1 is Township Rebellion. Holy shit you guys holy shit this they were after tin liquor so i knew tin liquor into township rebellion i knew that like time span was going to be another level the entire group was like who the fuck is this this is the best thing i've ever heard they're more like melodic techno but we got like techno in the forest at the observatory stage it was one of the best things i've ever seen The vibes are incredible. I was just looking around at the whole forest like illuminated at night with all the glow toys in the crowd and these guys are fucking dropping techno bombs like it was one of the best sets I've ever seen. So hopefully that gets uploaded because Township Rebellion do not sleep on them. Go see them at the next festival. All right guys my camera died. That's how I know I've been talking too long. So I'll wrap this up quickly. Surprise sets. People who surprised me. Gioli and Asia. Again 
live performers. They were absolutely incredible. Um, I think they were like 7 p.m. at the Carousel Club, but amazing house act. Young Bay was like so fun. Didn't know who he was, but he was more like disco house. It was such a fun vibe at Tripoli. I saw Surf Mesa at Sherwood Court. That was the only set I saw there. I definitely want to spend more time at Sherwood Court next year because it's a beautiful stage. But Surf Mesa was a really fun house act. Um, And then Lewis the Child's Playground set. Uh, basically they got up there and they were like our playground sets mean we play whatever the fuck we want we're just gonna have fun so that was really fun they played a lot of trap so it was like a lot of throwbacks and random tracks so like that was just a really good vibe okay favorite stages Um, like I mentioned observatory hands down was my favorite stage it's just absolutely beautiful being in the middle of the forest it's just at night it's just so gorgeous like the whole forest is illuminated it's so beautiful like so many people have like flow toys and like leds and glowing things so it's just really beautiful um the carousel club was my number two this was like indoors it almost reminded me of like neon garden kind of like an enclosed mega structure um and they had these like palm trees inside of it so that was really beautiful uh tripoli was number three um just because of the music there I spent a lot of time at Tripoli and it was nice because it was really close to the campgrounds Uh, then I would say the Grand Artique that beautiful like little wooden stage in the middle of the forest that I got to vibe out to that was super special Um, and then I put Ranch and Sherwood which I know those are both like the main stages but I just didn't spend enough time at them Um, Ranch was really really gorgeous and the production looked good but I never got close enough to either of them because the the artists were so big there and I really like never got that close other than Duke Dumont at Ranch. So I want to spend more time at those stages. Um, I kind of talked about favorite moments and highlights. So really quickly, I'll just run through this. Like I said, we covered all the sets. Um, just exploring the forest. Like I mentioned, I don't want to give away everything. You can kind of see it in my vlogs, but there's so many cool things you'll stumble upon. Um, the creation station was one of my favorites. It literally was this like neon glow in the dark area and they were doing like neon glow face paint there was this chalk wall that was all like black light um chalk so that was fucking sick like there was just so many things you would stumble upon like that um they had this whole wall that was different textures so when you walked up to it there was like fuzzy textures and sequin textures so like people were just like feeling this wall (laughs) like it was so fun so that was all really fun um Like I mentioned, the Porter piano set was super special. My meetup with Aid was really special. We really, really appreciate all you guys who came out to that. Um, It's just, I like doing those just because I get to have like conversations with you guys and put like faces to names of people I meet online. So that was beautiful. Um, I actually ended up getting my tarot cards read, which was so cool. This girl was walking around with a sign that said, tarot card readings and I flagged her down I was like can you pull a card for me so like there's so many people like that that just have like random skill sets that give back to the forest so like those are funny things um and then I won't say what happened but my friend Brandon is a very special human being he's the COO of Lunchbox he gave me one of the most special gifts I've ever gotten in my life it was a very memorable moment for me during the LPGOB Grand Artique set it was very thoughtful that's all I'm gonna say but it was like it triggered a lot of memories in me and it was like one of the special most special moments so there was lots of moments like that that were very like like feelsy and heartwarming and like I said I fell in love with my friends this trip we bonded so much we spent so much time together having the time of our lives so yeah loved every moment of it okay now all the nice stuff's out of the way, guys. We got to, I got to keep it real with you. We got to talk about some cons, okay? We got to talk some cons um, and things we can improve because there's always things that can be, can, but always things that can be improved here. So let's dive into that. So like I mentioned, um, the dust, I saw a lot of people talking about this. I don't really know what they can do about it because it's like simply just the location it's at, but just be prepared. I didn't have a mask or a bandana. I had to like borrow one from aid. I was just wrapping my pashmina around my face. The dust, especially in between Tripoli and Rancherina, was horrible. Like people, you literally could, were like ch- choking on the freaking dust. So that was so, so bad. I was literally like blowing black snot. It was disgusting. My lungs were like fucked up this whole week. So the dust was definitely one of the worst parts. The lack of cell service, again, if you had Verizon, you were fine. But it did really suck that I like 
I couldn't get any of the alerts. I didn't know any of the surprise things were happening. I couldn't check in with my family. I couldn't find my friends. But I didn't care about that because I the forest magic brought us together so many times. We would just like bump into our friends in the crowd. So I didn't even need self-service for that. But the system for leaving the festival needs some work. Like I said, we sat in traffic for two hours and cars started cutting each other off or cutting the line so like leaving the festival it was really really brutal so I got to figure out something next year to avoid that um, the cost of ice I don't know if that was just on the vendor themselves or the festival but ten dollars for a bag of ice when it's extremely hot and people could get dehydrated is like not fair to me so that was like a little bit of a cash grab um, sound issues I didn't experience any sound issues but during closies set on Saturday I believe it was unfortunately the bass wasn't really working and I think like 10 minutes into her set she came on and was like can you guys not hear the songs that well and people were like no um so she ended up like playing the rest of her set but Electro Forest is amazing and they gave her another set the following day in the carousel club we tried to go there was literally no way we were fitting in that tent. There were so many fucking people there. So that was really nice. They made up for it and gave her a second set. But there were some sound issues that I heard. Um, this was a big one for me. This is an, This needs to be a new system. The amount of waste of plastic cups from the alcohol vendors. So basically it didn't make any sense because you walk around the forest and there's literally signs everywhere talking about like how much like plastic is wasted and like just all these different like eco-friendly signs and ways you can be more sustainable like talking about like how much waste is created and stuff like that there's signs about that everywhere but then you go to the alcohol vendors and like let's take a beat box for example a beat box is in a tetra packaging which is fully recyclable every single vendor would take the cap of the beat box which is the whole point of beat boxes it's 11.1 percent alcohol so you want to drink it slowly so you can reseal it and put it in your bag for later most of the bartenders took the caps and then poured the beat box in a plastic cup so we ended up pouring the beat box back in the packaging as we walked away and then threw out the cup the amount of cups that were wasted because of that I can't even imagine like it didn't make any sense and we kept saying to the bartenders we were like save the cup we don't want the cup we just want the beatbox packaging um so I would like figure out something with your bartenders because there was so much waste created and we were like please stop giving us cups <laughs> like we don't want fucking want them so that was just really weird um cleaner bathrooms like I said I thought for the most part they were cleaned in between days and for the most part they had toilet paper I brought wet wipes with me but there was this one set of bathrooms near the chapel that almost the entire weekend was over flooded and was backed up so I don't really know what happened there obviously not everything can go smoothly um, but they were unusable for part of the weekend um, I would also say more lockers I wanted to buy a locker I waited literally until the last minute but I think there were only lockers near Tripoli so it'd be really cool if they added like a secondary locker station maybe more towards ranch arena as well because I would have liked to have like put my jacket in there until I needed it for later um, you can go in in and out of the campgrounds though which is really nice so like Plenty of my friends left the festival and came back in. It's not that big of a deal, um, but more lockers would be cool. So I do want to talk about one situation really quickly before I go into who this festival is not for, and it's just a very serious matter. So that's I haven't talked about this anywhere else yet, and I just wanted to save this for the end here. <sighs> I haven't talked about this yet, so we'll see how this feels. Um, on Sunday, during the second to last set of the day, our group, at least in my opinion, I had the most traumatizing experience I have ever had at a festival in my entire life, like literally traumatizing. So we were at um, a house music set at Tripoli on Sunday and we were maybe there for a couple minutes, like we had just gotten there and I don't remember like exactly how it happened, but I just remember a girl, a woman, we were all the way front left, like almost against the railing front left. There wasn't that many people there on that side either. But this woman turns around and says, medic, 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 like starts screaming for a medic. And we're like, what do you need? And then all of a sudden I see this man like drop to the ground, literally blue. Like I thought he was dead. It was horrifying. And we're like, fuck. 
our entire friend group and everyone around us starts screaming for Narcan because you can administer Narcan to somebody who's experiencing an overdose to revive them. So my whole group starts asking like around us, does anyone have Narcan? Does anyone have Narcan? Like freaking out. In that instant, it was like fight or flight. I just fucking sprinted to the medical tent, which is why I'm going to share the story is because you need to know where the medical tents are at festivals, guys. Like you absolutely need to know because you never know when you're going to be in this situation. So I knew that there was a medical tent at the very back of Tripoli. It wasn't far at all. It was literally right in the back, dead center. So when I saw him hit the ground, I sprinted to the medical tent and I would like just ran up to the guys and I was like, there's a man on the ground not breathing. And they just popped up and sprinted back with me. And I think the thing that scared me was like, it probably happened so fast. But in my head, I was just thinking like, oh, by the time we get back to this man, like I'm sure medical help will be there already, right? Like I thought maybe there was like medical people behind the railing or something like that. Nope, by the time we got back to him, they were the only medical people so the two men like started administering CPR and chest compressions and I believe they gave him Narcan I'm not sure at what point we literally just stood there like watching in horror like I thought this man was dead it was like literally traumatizing so that was just terrifying to see and a lot of my friends left because they just like couldn't witness it but I just felt like I needed to know this man was okay because I went to go get him medical help and I was like I need to know if this guy is gonna live a couple minutes later, another one of their friends drops to the ground of an apparent overdose is what I believe is what hap- was happening. The second guy drops to the ground. The medical team, at this point, cops and more medical staff came over. They started administering CPR and chest compressions on the second person. A couple, like not, Probably not even a couple minutes later, a couple seconds later, a, a third person collapses on the ground. Three people. And I had heard through organization, organizations through Dance Safe and Bunk Police, which exist in this space as harm reductionists to make sure that things like this don't happen. So I've never witnessed that in person before at an event. It was literally traumatizing. They ended up getting carted away. They put them on carts and carted them away. But the whole rest of the night, we were just like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know what happened to them. I don't know if they're alive. I don't even know what just we just witnessed. Um, I was hysterically crying. A lot of us were crying. Like it was just very traumatizing to witness. So that was very, very scary. We did decide to regroup and sit there because I was ready to leave. I was like, I want to go to the tent. Like I was hysterical. And we were just like, we can't leave the festival on this note. Like, let's just take a breather. Like, let's just all sit together because a lot of us still were together. So we just like sat on the floor. We watched Air to Earth, which was Porter Robinson's set and luckily like decompressed and like we're breathing and things like that I'm happy to report I went on reddit after the festival somebody posted about this event like did anybody see what happened does anyone know what happened to the people at Tripoli as far as I know there were no reported deaths at Electric Forest and I in the reddit people responded that they are alive oh sorry sorry it just is a lot because it's like I literally ran as fast as I could to get the medical help and I was just like if we didn't get the medical help in time like could that have ended like much you know could those people have lost their lives if we didn't get the medical help in time so that's just the only scary thing guys like it literally is a matter of like you don't know what your substances are laced with test your fucking drugs like or don't do them like you know what I mean don't take things off of strangers test your substances there's organizations like I said like dance safe and bunk police you can sign up for text messages so that night bunk police had heard about the situation and sent out a max mass text saying that there were reports of fentanyl laced mushrooms which they did do a full report I will link it below I believe that is not accurate that's not what happened Um, But both Dance Safe and Bunk Police did report on this matter that happened there. But like, I just need to take a deep breath. Like, this is just what's scary about it because you just never know what could happen. It was really scary to see it like happen to people in person. So I'm just telling you guys, know where the medical tents are. If you need to carry Narcan on you, I don't know if they're legally allowed inside the festival, but it's important to carry Narcan on you and know how to use that and administer that to people. And again, like, even my friend party safer with Jess like I texted her about this as well there are ways you have to accurately use the tests that you use to test for things like fentanyl 
So make sure you are reading the instructions and testing things accurately. Don't expect somebody else to do it for you. Like test your own stuff. Um, So I just had to say that and I don't mean to end this like on a negative note. Like this is not a reflection of Electric Forest or anything like that. It's just an experience that I had at the end of the festival. It did not ruin the experience for me or what I think of this event or anything like that. It's just like to me and my friend Aid was there too and she said like we we were there for a reason and hopefully it's to talk about this experience so that this doesn't happen to somebody else is kind of how I feel like why we were there. So I'm glad they're all okay. Thank the Lord God because I could not stop thinking about it this entire week. Um, But I did just want to mention that to you guys. So (sighs) take a deep breath. I want to end this on a good note. Um, That had happened. The other things I just want to say about this festival because like I said, I personally believe this was the most beautiful festival I've ever been to. It just was different than anything I've ever done before. I'm a big fan of camping festivals now. I will say like I did the damn thing. I'm happy I did it. It was a really great experience. Um, But it's not for everyone. I will say you can totally do in a hotel or an Airbnb. I did know people staying at Airbnbs, but I think doing the camping adds to the experience um but again just because I liked the festival doesn't mean that everybody will like it may not be for you if you don't really like camping festivals or if you don't mind like if you don't want to be like super dirty for a couple days in a row uh it's definitely hard to sleep sometimes because it's so loud because the RV party so you really really need earplugs um you need to be open to different genres and things like that because there's it's way more about like exploring music um definitely be willing to bring camping gear and things like that uh it was way more of like a chill vibe and atmosphere so if you want like a crazy like super high production like party festival vibes like go for ultra go for edc i would say um like there were people walking around this festival with like women with like no shirts on like it was way more chill like vibes like that so if you're not comfortable in that atmosphere then like this might not be for you Um, there were kids there as well on the flip side. It's a family festival. There were people with kids. There were pregnant women there. Um, like I said, it's not all about like the crazy over the top production with these stages. It's more like the experience and the stuff going on in the forest. Um, so yeah, so I just want to throw that in there because this could be for you, could not be for you. It depends on what you guys are into and what experience you want. So that is everything you guys. I know we're at an hour long here and I've talked your ear off, but um, that is everything Electric Forest. You guys, I will be back next year. No questions asked. I loved every second of it and I'm very excited for next year. So let's do, actually, let's take a super quick break here. I have my Rave Culture Cast recap and then I'll let you guys go. Alrighty, you guys. So what do we have in the news here? So we've just got like a couple festival lineup drops that I want to chat about. So we've got Crossed um das energy is another one and then uh we do have a festival cancellation as well i think it was called day in vegas but das energy um is in august this is in salt lake city uh we've got dead mouse excision lewis the child and subtronics as the headliners you got a ton of bass on here um a couple house artists thrown in there as well but that's a cool lineup that i was seeing um crossed festival i gotta get to this event at some point because this lineup is like speaking my name but cross is a house music house and techno event um in san diego so they just released their lineup i think this is the spring if i'm not mistaken or is this the fall event this is the fall event so they have artists like duck sauce and jamie xx art bat dom dalla fat boy slim mk sandy federa Joseph Capriati, Rainer Zonneveld, um, Reggie Houghton, Test Pilot, like f- filthy, filthy, filthy. So that is on sale. That's going to be in the fall. Um, and then I think it was Festive Owl who posted about it. Yeah, so Festive Owl um, posted about Day in Vegas getting canceled. So I believe this was like hip hop and rap um, event that was going to be taking place Labor Day weekend at the Las Vegas, Las Vegas Festival Grounds. So this was just canceled, unfortunately with less than a month or actually a little bit over two months before that was going to be taking place and then we've got some new music from a lot of artists but from Calvin Harris he was teasing that he had new music coming out this summer um so a new single dropped this past Friday I think this one was with 21 Savage it was aight it was my favorite I'm not gonna lie (laughs) it's called new money uh with uh 21 Savage so that one's out now but I am excited to see what else he comes out with he did like do 
um, a flyer showing like all the other artists that he's going to have singles coming out with. So that's cool. But um, yeah, that's pretty much all the news, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and for being a part of the Rave Culture cast community, my Rave Casters. That's our new name. Um, truly means the world to me. So if you guys enjoyed the podcast today, if you could share this with a friend, make it your Instagram stories, uh, read a review, rate and review. There we go. Um, we are at Rave Culture Cast on all platforms. We've got an amazing Facebook group and Discord community, which I'm trying to be super active in right now. Um, so definitely come over and say hello. Again, all of the Insomniac links will be down below along with the merch line links if you guys want to pick anything up. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy the festival vlogs. If you want to go like see what every day looked like and explore the sets and all that fun stuff, I've got daily vlogs for all five days. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, but thank you so much for listening and I'll let you get back to your Wednesdays. Bye guys.